Hello, future people. Welcome to Getting Tabled. I'm Jason the Bruce, and today we're looking at something quite large. We've got the UCM behemoth. So, first things first, this is not mine. This actually belongs to a friend that's allowing me to open this for him. This was one of his Christmas presents. So, everybody say thank you to John in the comments, uh, because I would not be able to open this otherwise, quite frankly. Um, very much looking forward to getting my eyes and hands on one of the behemoths, uh, so that I can go through, show you guys what it is that you're actually getting in hand so that you can get an idea of what the quality is going to be like for the one that you wish to buy. Uh, for me, obviously, it would be Scourge. Uh, I don't know what army you're looking at, but let's get down and have a look so that I can give Johnny's mini back. Sorry to interrupt the video, but I want to tell you about the competition that we're running through our Patreon. For every month of support you give our Patreon from now until April next year, you will receive one entry into the competition that we're running to win a Shaltari fleet for Drop Fleet Commander. That includes a Shaltari Dreadnought, a Shaltari Starter Set, a Shaltari Frigates Box, and a Shaltari Cruisers Box. All of this will be sent to one winner. This winner will be drawn at random on our fourth anniversary, which is recorded at the beginning of April. For us to be allowed to send this to you, you need to fit two categories. You must be living in a country where it's legal for me to post you something from Australia. You also must be living in a country where it is legal to win competitions. If you do not live in a country that meets these criteria, then I do apologise. There's nothing that I'll be able to do and I will be forced to redraw it. Please consider supporting us. We'd really appreciate it. All of this was purchased with my own money. No pay... All right, so first things first, we have the UCM America Behemoth, which is absolutely phenomenal. There is an alternate build to this. So you have the America and the Japan. This thing is, like, at least on the box, at least at first glance, is absolutely phenomenal. It's more of your um, traditional sort of looking dread. Uh, very unique looking legs on it. Uh, I'm very curious to see how this actually looks. Um, I've been looking forward to seeing this in the flesh for quite some time. And like I said, if it wasn't for John, I would not be able to do this. So the TT Combat stuff continues to be very well packed. Um, as much as this is sped up, um, it did take me a little time to open this. This outer sleeve in this particular occasion is actually rather thin. Normally these are, normally the sleeves are card. Um, but it still looks quite nice. It's very, very nice, actually. So, as you can see, this is a much thinner card than we normally get. The inside box is still exactly as you would expect it to be. So, we're looking at the A bag to start off with. No particular re Well. So, we're looking at the A bag to begin with. I just figured it was probably a smart idea to look at them in order. Uh, that is the only reason for this. Detail is absolutely phenomenal. absolutely phenomenal. There's a bit of a gate that needs to be removed here by the look of it. A couple more here that need to be trimmed off. Nothing nothing out of the ordinary. This is fairly fairly normal for resin kits. That You'll have a few gates that you need to trim off. Uh, you should be expecting that if you're working with resin. This looks to be the head. Yep. With its... Giant guns there on the front. So as you can see, the gates where they're positioned do interfere with being able to show you how this looks like together. Uh, but like I said, just trim those off. Uh, I will not be doing that because this doesn't belong to me. Uh, I want to give John the opportunity to do that for himself. Alright, so, first of these weapons, this is for the America, 
These are mass driver turrets. So these are, as far as I can tell, the equivalents of what goes on the ships. I don't know exactly which one this is. Uh, but it's the same sort of weapon that goes on the fleet ships. I'm not saying it's the same one. It's just the same sort of weapon. You get two of those for the America. And if you're building the Japan, you've got this, which they're calling the Stormcrow Cannon. Uh, as far as aesthetics is concerned, I think I prefer the aesthetics of the massive, the mass turret driver. It's just a personal thing. Like They're both absolutely gorgeous. And I'm not seeing any faults at all, really. I don't even really see any mold lines. At all, really. That's all. Oh, there's a little bit of one there. You can just see the mold line along here. But that'll be very easy to clean up. And given that that's the only one I can really see, the other thing that you'll be able to see under the light, so that's kind of a little bit shiny. It's a bit of mold release that'll be on this, and you'll get that with all resin kits. You want to wash these with warm, soapy water. Scrub them with a bit of a toothbrush or all something. Right. So in bag C, we've got a lot of little bits, actually. Uh, this is a very complex kit. There is actually a build guide on the website, which is good. I I'm really happy to see that because some of these models really do need it. Uh, this one in particular, I would be recommending that you definitely want to spend time looking through the document. It's 42 pages. Uh, again, I don't see anything majorly to be concerned about. There's no... There's, there's a bit of a mold line going along the top here, but it's not too drastic, really maybe tiny little bit of slippage like absolutely minuscule though uh, but yes you, you will need to run your lines down along that just to clean it up and then everything else in this bag is little tiny pieces and what you're going to find is that there's quite a few double ups because there's going to be a left and a right of everything but I'm just going to go through things discarding what I need to. Ironically, it's a complete coincidence that everything's kind of set side by side. <laughs> so there's actually a couple of those. I think because these work to be on the feet. Because that's the foot there by the look of it. Uh, these are for the Japan, they are for the America. Just something very quickly before I move on to the next bag, I just want to point this out, because it's a question that gets asked quite frequently in the T various TT Combat groups. Uh, not just TT Combat, uh, there's a few companies that actually have this. There's a stark difference in the resin colour here. This is not something you need to be concerned about, it's actually fairly common. Uh, different formulas of resin work slightly differently and come out with different colours. Getting different coloured resins is not actually a huge deal. Um, sometimes you'll also find that it, it it's kind of swirly on the bottom uh, where it's kind of settled, like not quite mixed as perfectly as these two are. Uh, but again, like it's nothing that you need to be concerned about. It's just something that happens as part of the process. So we've got another bag full of tiny parts here. Uh, this appears to be part of the legs. I quite like the wiring that's through certain parts of these. And very much has room for posability by the look of this as well. Because it looks like that allows you to pose. Um, I'd have to find the other piece to make sure, but from my understanding that is how these are supposed to work. I really, really like this. Um, I will give them props for this. The actual position of the gates has been designed very nicely. Uh, there's no detail that they're connecting to. They're on the side as opposed to in the middle here. Uh, it's not something that companies always get right, but they, at least on most of the parts I've seen so far, they've done really well here. I'm quite amazed at the quality of the cast on this, actually, because I don't imagine this would be a very easy piece to cast. Um, there's no warpage on this at all. Uh, I would not be surprised to find that some people may get some warpage uh, just because of the thickness of that. 
It, it wouldn't surprise me. If that does happen to you, you just need them in some warm water to bend them back to shape. Again, something fairly common with resin. And again, lots of little pieces. I would definitely be recommending to go through the instructions on this to build it, uh, because otherwise I suspect you're going to have a lot of problems. Lots of lovely armor panels. I would imagine that's part of the leg structure. More armor panels. For those that are maybe not quite as familiar with Drop Zone, it's probably worth mentioning that this is a 10 millimeter scaled game. This is absolutely huge. Like this is titanic levels of gigantism. Got a piece here that's, oh no, nope, that's not come from there. I do have a piece that's come off at some point though. Maybe I'd already seen it. It would appear, because this has come off at some point, and it, it would appear that this has actually been picked up during quality control because that's the piece that's missing, interestingly. So it's it's come off another, they've actually snipped it off another sprue to include it. Um, if I'm right on that, then TT Combat deserves a lot of credit for picking that up during the casting process because that could have very easily been missed. And otherwise, like I said, lots of, lots of small pieces. I think it's probably worth noting just because of what we just saw. If you ever do come across this in a kit from a decent company, in this case TT Combat, what you will find is that most of their bags or boxes will have codes in them that you're supposed to give them if something is missing just so that they can trace it. Um, so, yeah, John, obviously don't throw this out when you're going through it, just in case I'm wrong and there is a piece missing. I don't think there is. I'm pretty sure you've got it. And again, absolutely phenomenal detail. So this is all armor plating here. I love the fact that there's actually... Detail on the inside as well. Like there's no real reason to have detail in here because obviously this is going to be on the outside. But because there's options for how you pose this, you may see certain bits or you may not. So I like the fact that they've done this. Continuing to have phenomenal detail here. I think that might be... Is it the same? Yeah, it appears to be the same. It's the same piece. And then I imagine that these are for the other side. Yep. So that's the same, but for the other side. Still has the same detail on the inside. Here are our legs. Big, big chunky legs. Like so that these these pieces are huge. Everything's ball jointed, so you're going to be able to pose these things really, really nicely, however it is that you decide to do that. You've got right and left pieces to every side of this. Uh, I would be very much making sure that you dry fit every part of this before you put it together. Most of these are actually labelled. Now, as you can see, there's a few of mine that have actually come off, or a few of John's that have actually come off. So it's just a matter of, like I said, You'll want to dry fit all of this um, because you are going to have to take all of these off before you can build it anyway. You're not going to be able to build it, build it with these connected. So just be careful there because you want to make sure that you're gluing pieces to the right spots. So there we are. That's the UCM behemoth, either the America or the Japan. Uh, it is possible that you could magnetize this if you wanted to. Um, you'd probably have to play around with it a little bit to make that work. Uh, but realistically, it's just four things that you would have to change. The giant guns uh, and the missiles that go on the back are the only two things that you really need to change. The missiles would be easy. All you need to do is put magnets on both sides. 
Uh, it's probably the guns where you'll have a little bit more problem because they are going to be weighty and it's going to be trying to hang all of that weight off just the one magnet. So you would have to use a larger magnet. Uh, it certainly would be possible, uh, but otherwise, that, that's probably the only thing I'd keep in mind. Um, we've been going through the armies for Drop Zone Commander on the podcast quite a bit recently. Um, one thing I will say is that I would not recommend starting in Drop Zone Commander with a behemoth. I would get used to the game first and then add it later. Uh, just because these are much more complicated in the game and they change the game quite a bit. So if you're just starting out in the game, I would probably leave the behemoth until you're more comfortable. That would be my advice. If you go back to episode 94 of the Getting Tabled podcast, you'll be able to see our discussion on the full army. And a few recommendations. We don't go through everything. We go through the starter armies and three options each that we suggest would add something to the army that the starter's not already doing. Um, so if you're not already, go and give that a listen. It was out on the 26th of November. You've made it through to the end of another video. Your next mission is to hit subscribe and comment down below. If you'd like to reach out to the team, consider doing that, getting tabled at gmail.com. Consider subscribing to our Patreon. For only $2 a month, you get early access to almost every single video that we do. Our most active social media is facebook.com slash getting tabled. It's where you'll find everything first. There's also a Discord. There's an invite on screen right now. If you type that in, it'll give you instant access. If you're on Twitter or Instagram, you can find us at getting tabled. It's not the most active, but it's something we're trying to use more all the time. Come and check out Jason the Bruce at Twitch. He does both video game and hobby content. And of course, without question, play more games.